The term interest is a wide abstraction that covers the entire field of ethics. It includes the issues of man's values, his desires, his goals, and their actual achievement in reality. A man's interests depend on the kind of goals he chooses to pursue. His choice of goals depends on his desires. His desires depend on his values. And for a rational man, his values depend on the judgment of his mind. Desires or feelings or emotions or wishes or whims are not tools of cognition. They are not a valid standard of value nor a valid criterion of man's interests. The mere fact that a man desires something does not constitute a proof that the object of his desire is good nor that its achievement is actually to his interest. To claim that a man's interests are sacrificed whenever a desire of his is frustrated is to hold a subjectivist view of man's values and interests, which means to believe that it is proper, moral, and possible for man to achieve his goals regardless of whether they contradict the facts of reality or not, which means to hold an irrational or mystical view of existence, which means to deserve no further consideration. In choosing his goals, the specific values he seeks to gain and or keep, a rational man is guided by his thinking, by a process of reason, not by his feelings or desires. He does not regard desires as irreducible primaries, as the given which he is destined irresistibly to pursue. He does not regard because I want it or because I feel like it as a sufficient cause and validation of his actions. He chooses and or identifies his desires by a process of reason, and he does not act to achieve a desire until and unless he is able rationally to validate it in the full context of his knowledge and of his other values and goals. He does not act until he is able to say, I want it because it is right. The law of identity, AZ, is a rational man's paramount consideration in the process of determining his interests. He knows that the contradictory is the impossible, that the contradiction cannot be achieved in reality, and that the attempt to achieve it can lead only to disaster and destruction. Therefore, he does not permit himself to hold contradictory values, to pursue contradictory goals, or to imagine that the pursuit of a contradiction can ever be to his interest. Only an irrationalist or mystic or subjectivist, in which category I place all those who regard faith feelings or desires as man's standard of value, only such a rationalist exists in a perpetual conflict of interests. Not only do his alleged interests clash with those of other men, but they clash also with one another. No one finds it difficult to dismiss from philosophical consideration the problem of a man who wails at life and traps him in an irreconcilable conflict because he cannot eat his cake and have it too. That problem does not acquire intellectual validity by being expanded to involve more than cake, whether one expands it to the whole universe, as in the doctrines of existentialism, or only to a few random whims and evasions, as in most people's views of their interests. When a person reaches the stage of claiming that man's interests conflict with reality, the concept interest ceases to be meaningful and his problem ceases to be philosophical and becomes psychological. Just as a rational man does not hold any convictions out of context, that is, without relating it to the rest of his knowledge and resolving any possible contradictions, so he does not hold or pursue any desire out of context. 
and he does not judge what is or is not to his interest out of context on the range of any given moment. It means that he does not regard any moment as cut off from the context of the rest of his life and that he allows no conflicts or contradictions between his short-range and long-range interests. He does not become his own destroyer by pursuing a desire today which wipes out all his values tomorrow. A rational man does not indulge in wistful longings for ends divorced from means. He does not hold a desire without knowing or learning and considering the means by which it is to be achieved. Since he knows that nature does not provide man with the automatic satisfaction of his desires, that a man's goals or values have to be achieved by his own effort, that the lives and efforts of other men are not his property and are not there to serve his wishes, a rational man never holds a desire or pursues a goal which cannot be achieved directly or indirectly by his own effort. It is with a proper understanding of this indirectly that the crucial social issue begins. Living in a society instead of on a desert island does not relieve a man of the responsibility of supporting his own life. The only difference is that he support his, supports his life by trading his products or services for the products or services of others. And in this process of trade, a rational man does not seek or desire any more or any less than his own effort can earn. What determines his earnings? The free market, that is, the voluntary choice and judgment of the men who are willing to trade him their effort in return. When a man trades with others, he is counting explicitly or implicitly on their rationality, that is, on their ability to recognize the objective value of his work. A trade based on any other premise is a con game or a fraud. Thus, when a rational man pursues a goal in a free society, he does not place himself at the mercy of the whims, the favors, or the prejudices of others. He depends on nothing but his own effort, directly by doing objectively valuable work, indirectly through the objective evaluation of his work by others. If he undertakes to achieve a goal that requires the cooperation of many people, he never counts on anything but his own ability to persuade them and their voluntary agreement. Needless to say, a rational man never distorts or corrupts his own standards and judgment in order to appeal to the irrationality, stupidity, or dishonesty of others. He knows that such a course is suicidal. He knows that one's only practical chance to achieve any degree of success or anything humanly desirable lies in dealing with those who are rational, whether there are many of them or few. If, in any given set of circumstances, any victory is possible at all, it is only reason that can win it. And, in a free society, no matter how hard the struggle might be, it is reason that ultimately wins.